open the uh, March 11th select board. Um, this is the first meeting following uh, town meeting, so we don't have a chair yet. So um, we're going to open up the floor for nominations for a chair for the select board. I nominate Chris Travis. Second. All right. Good mm -hmm. Any other nominations? Have they heard none? Anybody, anybody um, in favor of Chris Jarvis as the chair? Mark? Aye. Opposed? Or zero, Chris. Chris wants to stand. Do you want to stand? Do you want to stand? Can I give you a little speech? Okay. Or zero. All right. So we'll move on to uh, approving the agenda. Is there anything that's not on the agenda this evening that we would like to add or any modifications? Uh, I have. You we can do this, but I have a potential appointment to the solid waste board. Yep. You, 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 I was just figuring we could probably talk about it during the uh, during the appointment of town officials piece. Okay. As an addition to the yeah, we'll one talk about that. So okay. Thanks. Okay. not on the agenda this evening. Speak down. Okay. It's your mandated 15 minutes. Can we just sit here quietly and watch her? Yeah. yeah. This is this is okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So unless anybody uh, it, I move forward with the uh, with Teresa's appointment for 650, which is on state or not. And kind of the reason for um, you know, Teresa's appointment really is after the town meeting, well, it was kind of before town meeting day, but uh, just kind of catching up with uh, the winter season has been one that's been very trying on our budget, as it has everybody else in, in the state of Vermont, including the state of Vermont. Um, last I checked, the state of Vermont was about seven million dollars in the red on their winter maintenance budget, and uh, our budget, just like everybody else's, is in the red. So this is a kind of an opportunity for us to go through, see where we're at now, um, what can we do to tr maybe lessen the blow of of our overspending for winter maintenance, and try to get our budget not on track but closer to the budget. So. Um, so Teresa had done a good job of uh, putting in a, a packet um, with some projections in it. Did everybody get that? Nice. So it looks just like your budget, budget staff's report. And, and I put a memo on it, so we should talk a little bit about, obviously there's a lot that you're assuming. I mean, I just looked at the bills tonight to see, because Pam processing AP, to see what, you know, something that's come to light that maybe I'm missing. Um, so, 93% collection rate is actually what we have trended so far this year on 2019 taxes without you know, just sending our little delinquent notices, so that's not bad. I'm sure you're all aware that we pay the school in full by June 30, regardless of, of whether or not we've collected it or not. So, um, and I have updated the, the budget um, with the school numbers because the, school, the state of Vermont sends you a tax rate you base it on your brand list at the time, and then when there's some changes happen, it changes. So I, I did make that adjustment in the budget. Um, so I also have noted in here that um, Bridge 33 overspent the budget. But, you know, Greg had a point, which was, what we did, what, when I say that is, we also we took that overspent money out of the 110000 that you would have used for roads. So there's still a little bit of money left in there, but if you were looking at what we had originally hoped for the bridge was our $25,000 match, they're $175,000. So obviously that didn't line up. So we would be in a better position if we hadn't had to overspend on the bridge. To, you know, we would have a little more of that $110,000 agreed up. Um, obviously I'm projecting, you know, $50,000 for the tax sale. I'm anticipating that we'll, we may make out better than that, but you know, I don't have a crystal ball. And at this point I have 
actually have had a couple people pay off today. Um, the, it seems like all the big properties with land are going to have will pay off. I had Sadowski, Sadlowski's paid off. Smith is going to pay off this week. Um, there's still properties on there. One of the biggest ones that owes us the most money is Steel, and that's over fifty thousand. So we'll see what happens. Um, so that's the thing about projections is they're just that, you know. And I think obviously our biggest revenues are non -ta or taxable revenue taxes. So we kind of know, you know, that's that's what I'm using. So if we come in with a better collection rate, you know, we get more money in, then that's great. You know, technically nobody's actually truly delinquent until they miss the May 15th payment, but they do get pink notices every month. So um, I just kind of wanted to let you know about those assumptions. Um, some of the stuff too is if you went through the expenses, I don't know how Chris, how do you want to do this? Um, so do you want to go budget by budget, like department by department, or what, how would you like to do that? I think right now, just kind of over um, a high overview right okay. now. So with the main, with the winter, uh, so Teresa's done the calculations in here for uh, where we believe the revenue will end up. Of course, there's some moving targets there with right. the tax sale and whatnot, um, as well as uh, you know the collection rate being at 93 percent. Then, then there's the, um, our budgeted versus projected expenses that takes into account all the winter spend. Um, so right now, right now we're looking at a net negative 32, 33,000. Yep. Um, most of it is due to the, the, the winter spend. Yep. Um, um, sand and salt over time. For right. Power. And the pay of the budget, the, there's a stack of payables that I just went through, and um, that has a $22,000 salt bill in it, and it has another like five or seven, five, just over 5,000, I think, in repairs and maintenance, because, you know, poor guys are just having to take a beating on vehicles. Um, I did talk to Alan about, you know, I think I put that in the memo. He's okay. He's like, I'm good with culverts. I'm good with signs. And he was just going to try to keep overtime to when he has to, obviously, when he has a um, storm. Um, I went so far as to speak to the contractor who cleans the town office and told him today, I spoke to him today after he left, he came in. I said, look, there's a chance that you may, how do you feel if we tell you you can clean town hall, but Pam and Kelly and I will just deal with the office on our own, you know, on the, to save that couple hundred bucks a month. I said, look, we're running tight and we're gonna be looking for everything we can. He had no problem with that. So, um, you know, we're certainly looking at everything at this point, purchases or what's unspent to see, um, what, obviously what we don't have to spend, where we can curb any savings. Right. And, you know, the winter, I mean, the winter is our, you know, telltale sign of how our budget goes. You know, if we have a, a fair or winter, then usually we come out ahead, you know, on our budgets. Yeah. And if we have a, a tough winter that we have, you know, you know, between materials, well, one, materials were more expensive this year to begin with, and then, um, like salt had gone up, and obviously the, the weather events that we had, we've had winter since late October, so it's been a very long winter. That's right. Uh, that doesn't seem to be going away. Um, and then uh, most of these storms we've gotten have been big storms that require, you know, cleaning the streets afterwards and, you know, fair overtime goes into that. So at this point, just trying to figure out, just wanted to have a discussion on, you know, what does it really look like, which we have numbers. Uh, and, you know, we do have a couple of months to, as a board and administration to kind of say what maybe can we get away with not doing, what can maybe we push to the next year, how can we try to get this like, closer to zero. I mean, four years to zero, probably not, but exactly. at least well, we can make the effort. To try we to can, and worst case scenario, as I've said in here, is we don't transfer some of our capital money. So there is a fallback position here, which is not transferring everything you know, I haven't transferred that last 12500 into the capital improvement reserve, nor have we transferred the 66. We got 70, 
8,000 that we haven't transferred yet into capital funds. So, um, you know, there's, so good news for us is we, we do have some money there that, that, you know, that might, we might end up just having to reduce those so that we don't go into a deficit. I mean, it doesn't really make sense to save for something when you can't cover your operational expenses. So we do have a little bit of, you know, a fallback there if we need to. But also, two things could, you know, we finally see spring. And uh, <laughs> that'd be a bonus. And, you know, we'll see how we do, like I said, taxi on collection and where else we can, or, you know, corners. And certainly we'll put a memo out to uh, the Lister's office rec department, fire department, you know, Mark knows, I've already talked to him, and just say, look, folks, if you don't need it, let's, you know, don't buy it right now. Let's hold off and see where we end up, you know, <laughs> come, come June, May or June. Now, I was looking at a few of the items, um, and they, these are mostly in the areas that you said that we would spend the whole budget yeah. in the department. Right. And some, there were some items that were under the um, the budgeting percentage. Yeah, and some are. We like, still have insurance that we still have another. So I just know, don't know if they get paid quarterly or. Yeah, insurance comes out quarterly. Okay, so, so we have two more payments of insurance, and one of them is in the next round of bills. So there are some, and I'm also looking at historic. Like historically, the listers haven't spent their entire budget. But you know, Louise's typewriter died today. Of what I'm looking and, at was, and maybe she will. You know. Like there was the street lights. Which is a twenty-seven thousand dollar, twenty-seven thousand budget on street lights, and currently we're at about twelve. Yeah. So I mean, I assume that lighting gets paid monthly. Yeah, we usually are ahead. So I just on. I wondered why that was. Why it's so different? You know, because right now the way it looks like that, and that's a pretty big item that maybe there's a potential for savings. Which but I don't is that when the public works? works? Uh, it's under parks and public places. Oh, thank you. But I know we had, you know, you have to. We have the well, we have that, allowances yeah. in there for the lighting as well as we had put the yeah. new street lighting in. I'll look at it and I'll put a little, well, I'll write it down. My list it's just a large there. quantity, so I But it is, you're right. And the, I know too is, well, and that isn't, I know we put in some LED bulbs um, last year. Maybe that really has that. Yeah, I think we have a few more we're doing next week, right? Yeah. Actually, Wednesday. Are those, we had are those budget, things that we've already purchased? Or? Does no, this budget no, include. Yeah, right. Okay. Doesn't this budget include five grand for LED lighting? Yes. We took out, yeah, that's yes. right. Mm -hmm. So there's one other expense I think we're going to have to deal with at some point is the repair of the fire station. We're good, I think, right now. Yeah, we right. have, I just met with fire chief Friday maybe because you have some additional repairs there due to an insurance claim. So I did ask him about that on Friday. He said, look, what's, what's the statement? How do you think we're going to end up? Told me I said, we have the tent. Pretty big number of yeah, and we, and we did. But he thinks that between the 10 we set aside and the 11 that we got from the insurance company, that he, he thinks that he's going to be able to get it done for less than that. Yeah. So. And looking at the original quote from the adjuster, they didn't deduct a whole lot off of that. That he had a value that he assessed for all the damages to the, to the firehouse, mm -hmm. and then he had, you know, had a, a uh, depreciation that he had adjusted. Which I think, if you looked at the form, there wasn't a whole lot of depreciation that was put in. So I think they're going to give us close to the actual value for the repairs. Yeah, the only thing but we'll the, be looking at is the thousand dollar deductible to come yeah. out of the highway. Yeah, and the adjuster and came back out today. He was out there with um, Alan and, and uh, Jason today. Asking him a couple of questions, but like I said, looking at the original with the HD, yeah. they came out and did the original um, estimate. Yeah. There was very little in there for that we lost, so we might yeah. be okay. Other and Dave thinks like, there's some that he could reuse, like where there's insulation. He thinks that can be reused. And he said, you know, obviously some of it, Teresa, is we need to open up a wall. And he said, then yeah. I'll have a better idea. So but, yeah. but he was feeling pretty good about it. So I think that we will certainly be able to get all the repairs done. Um, the money we have so he knows that he knows he can't go over that budget He's well i was there when the estimator was there too and he said if you open up the wall and you see something that i didn't because he couldn't do that of course yeah. right. if you see something crazy we'll adjust it yeah. well we'll make it happen yeah so i think we're okay yeah i think you're gonna be fine yeah. Yeah. and you may you know who knows maybe open out a little bit ahead i don't know but but definitely um you know that's most things you need done so
No, I think, you know, I got to think with, you know, some average luck on the revenue end of things. Hopefully the winner just kind of goes away here the next week. Um, <laughs> From your you know, I, I think we'll I'll just be able to deal with this winter deficit yeah. a better. Um, but I, I do like the idea of maybe just getting together with the department heads and just kind of, oh yeah, you know, if, if you don't need anything right yeah. now, don't buy it. Uh, let's wait for. I've already discussed that with Alan. Yeah. Um, we can't you know, buy it. It's, it's a computer that we were going to get. We're going to get it in July. Let's work through that budget probably better. Right. Well, another thing too is looking at things we can do in the spring and summer to kind of, yeah. like the cemetery mowing. I mean, it's, this is something we, it's a big expenditure. We're actually going to be going out to get it as soon as we Well, at this point, we need to Yeah, that's right. But yeah, we are, we, we will be going out to get it. Go away. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's a big ticket item. So. Right, and Greg is putting that out to bid, so you may see some savings there. Um, certainly, yeah, if you, yeah, it's you know. not really, I mean, I looked at last year, I looked at it, and they're really not charging a tremendous amount. It's the frequency at which they do Right. Uh, and you can, really you know, put that on your bid. Well, I, when I talk about some direct commissioner, he's pretty adamant about doing them every week. Because if he does, if we don't, then he gets call after call after call. But what we tried last year was we did them every week until fall or late summer, and then we tried to do it like a 10 day, two week rotation. And that seemed to work out okay. Because they're doing, you're right, they do it by the hour. So mm -hmm. if we can lower those hours, you know, mm -hmm. that's definitely an advantage. But yeah, you know, and, you know, the elephant in the room really, as far as money is, in, in my point, in, in my opinion, and when I've talked about this is, so where do we, and when do we make the decision where does it stop? You know, where do we use salt? Where do we use sand? We all know that sand is cheaper than salt, significantly cheaper than salt. I think it's very, very important at some point here in the near future to figure out what are we going to do? Are we going to keep sanding the, everything that's black or, or a lot of the black and keep it black because that's what the people are asking for? Or do we switch to sand and, and sand the majority of these places and use salt maybe downtown? where there's gutters and we don't want to salt up the gutters and, and mess with the flow of water and all that. That's a big conversation we need to have because it's going to have substantial effects on our budget, but also on people. People are going to, there's going to be a, a it's a change. So potentially a change. Um, so you instead know, of one section of people complaining, you're going to get another. It's going to be somebody, yeah. Right. But at least it will be cheaper on the budget. You know, I, again, where I come from, we do a lot of sand. It's a lot of sand and very little salt and people, Kind of used to it. I think in the past that's probably the way that it was. We weren't salting everything, and we're not salting everything. But we're salting a large portion of the, the asphalt, a very large portion of it, because that's the expectation. If we don't, we get people are screaming and hollering at us. We last week or the week after, or week before, or whatever it was, we put salt or sand down on Camp Road. They put salt. We just sand it, and it was great. You could traction up and down it, but. People are calling, screaming, and freaking out. It, it's not, you know, it's a mess. It's muddy. This and that. So it's it's really more of a, a board level. It's a board level policy. It really is at this point because the guys are doing what they think they're supposed to be doing because based off of the, the feedback that we get from people in general. But I think it's beyond that. I think it's to the point where we really need to have a policy in place that I can hand to these guys and to people and let them know how we're going to do this. I agree with Rick, because we've talked about it. Yeah. Getting a real policy going. Because, well, and you know, salt, it's a shortage this year. So you know that price is just going to skyrocket next year. We may be seeing another 15% increase next year <laughs> with a huge shortage of salt. So I just think it's something to put on the radar. I, I think I want to have a conversation before I write a policy, because I don't know which way to go with it. I really don't. You know, we're, I'm okay with salting and doing what we're doing, but we've got to know there's a huge implication to the budget. But I need to know from the board which way you want to go. So that we have some backing when we get all these calls from these people that are complaining that North Road and Camp Brook and whatever has to <coughs> and not salt. Yeah. We might salt. The idea would be to sand them until, until we can catch up and get to where they need to be. And they can put some salt, which would cut everything, and then they can slough it off or whatever. But not what we're doing that. I think that's what they've done in the past. Is, you know, when we get after a while on the pavement, you get potholes. 
Right. And people don't show up. The potholes really were out of their time and they complain about them. Slow down. Yeah. Well, that's the nice thing about the sand, too, is that it's, it's not black. You know, you're seeing lines of white or snow and whatever, and, and it, the traction's there. It's just, it inherently slows people down, I think, so. But you get some places like the curb at the bottom of Camp Brook that's in the shade all day long that right. it freezes up. Sure, that sure. The last curb there at Ketner's uh, freezes up overnight, then you can try to come down the next morning and the sand is into the ice and right. frozen in the air and people lose traction. They go too fast around that corner anyway. Uh, so, so again, that's a good, that's why we need to talk through this. Maybe that's a place where... Right. Or maybe the policy is, yeah, we're just going to use sand. I mean, salt. I get it. I just need to have some direction. Mm -hmm. We've got a plan for it in the budget. That's the big thing. And the budget, it's a, I mean, you can see it's a huge implication to the All right. It's huge. You know, if we can cut that in half, we're, we're trying some new material, too, that we've got for money. We're trying some new stuff to see if maybe we can use that. As a road we're taking all these overweight trucks that get stuck on the scales. What's that little sign on the side of most of them trucks say? Doesn't matter. You can't land, you can't land. No, I agree. We need to. It's, it's just, you know, May, and, and I've already told Alan about money. Put together, a, I mean, the town doesn't have a bare roads policy to begin with. Right. Now, it's no different than the state of Vermont doesn't have a bare roads policy, but you see most of the time the roads are bare, and it's because of the tourists, and, you know, it's be, it's become an expectation. But, you know, we probably do need to recircle the wagons on that we don't have a bare roads policy in, in the town, or if we do, then the voters just need to know that's going to cost well, more that's money every year to do that. No, but if we're going to use salt, great, but let's put a budget that's reasonable to cover it so we, we aren't overrunning it. Right. You know, that's, there's got to be one way to And that boils down to what is the expectation of the people in town? Yes. What are we going to do? And we need to have it in a policy, because I need CYA to cover my people's behinds, and if the board puts in a policy, this is this is why we're going to do it. It's going to be, you know, during a storm and, and right after a storm, we're, we're we're sanding the asphalt, and then if we see an ice issue, we'll come in and we'll, we'll cut it or whatever. It's great. If you say you want to salt everything, okay, but we we just need something because we hear it both ways. What? I hear it both ways. Why are you doing it this way? And then the other side says, "Well, this is great. We love it." You know, how do you how do you make sense? But why don't we? Um put together some time here in the next uh, month or two to um, have some discussions on winter maintenance. And it, you know, sometimes people will say, well, why do you spend so much time talking about winter maintenance? But winter maintenance is a big part of your budget. It's huge. It's, it's a yeah, major part. Sure. So, you know, maybe we can talk a little bit more as a board on, you know, how would, how would it look like, uh, get some feedback, Maybe, um, maybe let the public know that that would be a hot button topic sure. for a month or two so they can get to the meetings if they're a downtown business owner or if they live up on top of Camp Brook Road or whatever. So we're talking through this. It would be nice, at least I would think it would be nice for us to have something like this together by the end of June or 1st of July. That way we can get it out there to the town's folks. <laughs> This is the plan for winter. Be prepared. You know, if, if whatever if we decide to use mostly sand and just a little bit of salt in certain areas, then we're fair warning people that you know to make sure they're ready. It gives them ample time. If we if we roll this out in late fall, then it's going to give them a lot of time. But sure. at least now we can start to hear the grumblings up front, and and then then allows us the budget for that. And if you get it done, you could send out the tax bills. Yeah. <laughs> Because we're already doing a mass mailing, you could send out with tax bills. My only co comment would be on this, obviously, is to make sure Alan was here, but you might even want to have a conversation with um, Fire Chief and maybe any of the local state troopers just to figure out for public safety, where are they seeing accidents, where's... So you would know maybe that's part of your policy is you're going to solve these certain aspects, but they've obviously been here a long time. They might be able to help you as far as where they've seen repeat accidents. Yeah. I'm sure you could ask the fire chief as they probably get called them all the time anyways. And part of it is gonna be a little difficult just because if you, you start trying to set a you know a, a benchmark of if it hits four inches of snow with what plow or something like that. The problem that we're seeing here is that the environments are different everywhere. 
You know, it may be not here to get up on top of Camp Brooke. It's blizzard. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, so, I was sleeping in my house last night. I drove down here to get a paper and I was doing nothing. Right. So, right. so that's a bit of a challenge, too. Out. But I think just letting, for budget reasons and, I mean, just overall for everybody, just letting us know, you know, what what do you want? And, and having people here to talk about things great idea, as much feedback as possible. Because I think what people want, it's all over the board. And I don't mind giving them whatever they want, I just gotta have them into it. And I think it's pretty easy for us to come up with a policy. You know, one, you can have a, a village district policy, which might be, you know, sand the streets, and salt the sidewalks, or whatever, whatever that might be. And it allows the business owners, as well as, you know, um, other tax, um, citizens to come in and voice their opinion and you know maybe you know, the rest of it is you know maybe there are certain roads that we say we're in the salt that are black and all the others are sanded you know, right. right. well, you know like for, like right now East Bethel doesn't get a touch of salt yeah. and, and uh, they have no problem Gilead Mount Hack is has payments there's no salt on there yeah. but you know if we got a policy then it's easy on Greg to say okay this is what the select board says and, and you know it's Sure. It's, My job is to carry out your wishes, so. But I, you don't want to be so rigid that you well, have I think the flexibility right. to yeah. react to a storm, a sure. you know, freak right. storm, and, you know, the, to come to the media. Well, that's why it yeah. might be the policy is this or, or else directed by the town manager. You know, Maybe so it gives the, the fire town manager the to, opportunity. Instead of, instead of policies or procedures, it's like a SOG, suggested operating guidelines, so that it's not just yeah. harsh policy. Yeah. It leaves, sure. yeah. right. And, and I think you we know, just have to take away from that. William, with yeah. the room. You know, if you give your employees you know, a pile of sand and a pile of salt, and if, I'm the, if I'm the driver, I'm going to fill up with salt because it's going to make my life a lot easier. I'm going to take one less trip and, you know, um, but it but, costs you three times the amount to true. put salt in. So, um, you know, we just need to look at that. What well, the trade offs would be. How would that look in our budget? Right. But when we get Camp Brook with sand, yeah, I got a couple calls that it was ugly, it was muddy, but not one person said I was sliding around. Right. It was doing the job. It was great. And we'll just have to make sure that the comments are, you know, because the, the, it's a safe issue, not, not an inconvenience issue, you know? I mean, sure. I wonder if the leader has got some uh, guidelines from other towns, what other towns do for policies that, that, that have got written policies. I'm sure we can find something. Yeah, well, I mean, Alan's got good relationships with the other towns around us. We could get hold of their policies yeah. if they have them. Well, we can call around to our neighboring towns, yeah. like Royalton and yeah. Randolph. Because our policy just basically says that we will plow. So the, yeah, I think it says the school routes first or something, and yeah, and we'll fall back. It's very, very small. It, it used to be, and maybe it's not a policy. Maybe, you know, maybe like Tree said, it's just a, a general guideline, and just you allow the, you allow the, the foreman to make that or myself to make that decision. I don't know. But in, in some towns, uh, in the village districts, everybody's responsible for their section of sidewalk. I mean, right. and that's something we want to look at too, to save the town money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we? Uh, why don't we, why don't we make a, um, an agenda item for that for the next one? Can <coughs> do it next year. Start. Or you want to wait a little bit? I mean, we might as well do it now. I mean, do we have anything else pressing right now? To, I mean, because at some point coming, we'll have the map, water master plan and things like that. that we're right. Start That's right. not too far out, but. Well, it's going to make a big difference when we start our budget, because if we're going to cut back on salt, we're going to have to increase the sand. Right. 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 You know, so I mean, the budgetary is going to have to be right before we really get going down to it. But I mean, and we'll put it out it's there. on the forefront right now, and might as well right. Right. tackle it. Right. About it. So, and I then, and then if we could hammer this out in the next month or two, at the end of the winter here. I'll tell you what. Let's just do it at the next meeting. Was it the twenty fifth, March twenty fifth, and we'll put it out out to the public that we're going to have a uh, winter maintenance discussion, whatever. Uh, we'll put it out there today. We'll put it in as a as an item. Either uh, we'll figure we'll it out. 25th. March 25th. That's the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. We'll be needing money. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay. No one wants it. That one. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I just wanted to get that out there because I know that that's a, it's a, such a big dollar item too. And, and I get both sides of the fence. It's one extreme or the other. 
we hate it or we think it's great. Yeah. The hell of it is if the change is going to be just reverse on, on the ground. Right. But at least I'll have something that I can fall back on and say, look, this is, this is my guided document. This is the way we're doing it. If you don't like it, come talk to me. That's what I think. That's what I'll do. All right. So in regards to tracking the projection that Therese has, how does the board feel we should follow up with this? I mean, we do get the monthly uh, costs and right. revenue. So we'll do two. Now you just get the monthly budget status report plus I'll just give you an updated projection. Throw the projection time. in there so we can talk about that. So you think monthly is, that'll give us It gives me two, three more gives touch you two points. Payrolls, gives you two Accounts payable. I mean, I flipped through that accounts payable tonight to see. I mean, well, pretty much gives us two more touch points because once you get junior. Yeah. Dentists. Right, exactly. But two plus in March, we'll know like to tax sales 19th. Um, so we'll see what, you know, that looks like. 19th, so. 19th at 1 o'clock is tax sale. So do I'm sorry. You said what, what month? March 19th at 1 o'clock is tax yeah. sale. Something so, like you know, by the 25th, I'll have all the. You know, know how I'm making out with the tax then. How many do you have left? Yeah. In your article. Yeah. Um, I have, let's see, I started with 14. You got seven. And I had 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, one o'clock. One o'clock at town hall. Yeah, there's that. So uh, is our next meeting too soon to you know the updated projection or? Would, would no, no, but the 25th because the tax sale is the 19th, so I'll know that day. They have to come in with cash in hand, so okay. we'll know right then and there what that looks like, and it will have given me another, you know, um, two. I think I've seen one, one or two payables anyway, so you know we'll just give them to you at the end of each month like we do now. Okay. And it'll give us an idea to keep an eye on. And obviously, we're going to put out, I'm going to put out something to the department heads and speak to them. And so we'll follow up on this on the 25th. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, it's hard to know. I mean, you don't have, we can't cut anybody out of the town office. I mean, we've already done that. You know, we're already tight there. It's not like you have big staffing issues where you can, um, where there's a huge savings right there. You know what I mean? That's just not the case, but, you know, certainly. Um, Blister's budget is so small anyways, uh, you know, you've got the rec to run the pool and so, and of course too, there's places where I projected they'll spend the whole thing. I'm not sure that they will. Yeah, um, Blister's may not, but however, you know. It's just a projection that's not exactly. a crystal Yeah, you know, my crystal ball is a little cloudy, but we'll have a better handle on it each time. But if you have suggestions. Um, on where we could cut besides the obvious, which is cleaning or signs or culverts or, you know, that sort of stuff. I'd love to hear it. Cut the slutman's salary. Oh, yeah, there you go. You're going to give it back. Yeah, you already got it this year. Um, no I mean, I think at the, the, comp time. That's right. right. Yeah. I think at the 25th, after the tax sale, we'll have a little better understanding where we're going to fall revenue on. Yeah, and the good thing is, too, taxes were due February 15th, so it means I just sent out the delinquent notices. So, you know, we do see a little uptick when all of a sudden people get the pink slip and say, I forgot to pay my taxes. So, you know, we might see a little uptick in revenue there. But if you see expenses that you think we can, you know, obviously we will look at, you know, supplies and snap, but electric's electric, right. debt's debt, and insurance is yeah. insurance. Mm -hmm. That's it. A lot of your budget is, you know, you don't, we don't run big budget. So it's not like we build a lot of fat in the budget. So when you have to cut. Well, why don't we, uh, why don't we get into the weeds a little bit on the next meeting after we know what our revenues are looking like. Um, then we can, that will give us a couple of weeks that we can each kind of look through it and maybe add some suggestions of yeah, what great. we think. And also, we can, give me a and we chance can to that with, you know, to what Greg's thinking and, and what you're thinking, and you know, is yeah. doable, not doable. Can, you know. can we do a coin drop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, gives it me a chance to look at water sewer to see how they're doing because obviously, you know, you keep water sewer afloat. So we'll see how, um, 
you know how that budget flows. Yeah. You know, so because we pay all their bills, so then there's a do to do from. So we'll see. But now I haven't looked at their budgets yet, but we can do that. Any further discussion on this this evening? Or are we good? <coughs> uh, I think it looks great, Therese. Thank you. Yeah, sure. It's, you know, it's, it's tough. We're trying to do some guessing. But I know um, it's something. It's something we just never would have had. We're actually having a discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the main topic. Which is it's great. It's actually waiting, not waiting until the, the ship is. I mean, I don't think out in harbor. I don't think there's one single, you know, citizen of. Bethel, that's going to stand up and say that we did not have a hard winter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That was a lot of comments at town meeting was, oh, this winter. Yeah. You know, winter spend is expensive. It so. is, yeah, absolutely. So hopefully we'll, we'll see some great savings somewhere. Maybe you get some big bequest or something. Maybe <laughs> it'll be all good. Some donation to the town. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to start going in by now. Powerball ticket. That's very right. funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks, Bruce. Thank, Thank you. you. Discuss the select board chair duties. We need to uh, go over that. Or are, we, are we good now? The rules. <coughs> rules of procedure. No, that's the next. Oh, one. that's damn. I don't know why that one. I don't know how that. You know that too. Oh, I it was just uh, just to like the chair. So I think it's just a good. Okay. 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 So really nothing on that one. Well, we have to sign a. We have to renew that every year. We do. The the rules must be, must be readopted annually at the organization. Yeah. 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 Not what he's talking about. The next oh, time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the review of the select board rules, everybody have a, the handout of the select board rules. Do you want me to go through these individually or we we all get the way they, they stand? Is that chance to change for 100 years? <laughs> Still got three lines on it because nothing's changed for 100 years, so you'll have to make your own lines. And reading through, there's adhering to all our rules currently, so. Do we need a motion? Do you want to change something like that? <laughs> yeah, we do need a motion to accept it. I move that we accept the uh, double step of the rules and procedures. Second. 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 Well, that's going around. Um, are we good to continue the meeting dates and times of currently adopted, or do we need changes to that? Do you feel as a select board? Or? No, I think it's good to be the way it is. Let's go with the Sunday morning. Why Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the turnout would have to get better. <laughs> so, yeah. So we we'll continue to do the second and fourth Monday at six o'clock here at the town. Okay. Town hall, six o'clock, second and fourth Mondays. Yep. Okay. And do we need a motion to accept that? Let's do a motion for all of them, just so that we can cover it. I know I'm sure we'll last year. Entertain a motion to accept the meeting dates as the second and fourth Monday of each month um, to occur here at the town, town hall at 6 p.m. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. She said, do we all turn? Let's put it on the vault and I'm going to Paul had the first one. You can finish it. You got it. Yeah. 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 And designate the newspaper of record. Currently, it's the Randolph Herald. Second. Do they give donations? <laughs> Just. <laughs> well, we're going to try. All right. So, uh, motion by Emily and second by Paul. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Randolph. We'll do the motion. 
Uh, Lindley. Lindley. Okay. okay. We're throwing him off. I'm gonna mix it up a bit. All right. So Randolph Harold will stay as the paper of record. Uh, designate the physical location for meeting postings. Currently, they are the town office, the billboard here, at the town hall, and, and the clerk, and the clerk's office. We do an extra one sometimes at um, Mills Harbor, but it's not a designated. So is everybody okay with keeping them at the three locations that we currently have them, or do we need to extend? Do we them? currently put them on the website? I know it's not we a do. physical location. We do. They go on the website, yeah. 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 I know it's not a physical location. Yeah. Okay. Entertain a motion to accept the the current uh, physical locations as the the clerk's office, the town office, and the town hall. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, designate the official path. Just, uh, well, I was thinking through the pattern. It, typically, we just kind of, I don't want to say pencil with these, but usually we go with whatever we wanted last year. The only thing I got thinking a little bit with the pound, pound right now is, uh, you know, we have had a few instances of animals that we've had to take, uh, use my words, Carefully, but currently we're with Royalton, which typically tends to be the more expensive choice in the area to to service um, animals. So I'm just wondering if there's, I could see if we had a Bethel option, you know, but right now our options out of town anyways. So there are two other options in the area, both of them are in Randolph. There's a Randolph um, veterinarian clinic as well as the um, animal hospital. So. I didn't know if there was a conversation piece on, because I know we did have a dog last year that we took and it cost us $800, so. Um, we had a few. Where it may not have cost quite as much. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure with the other two, yeah. what that so, would cost us. We haven't really negotiated anything with them. The biggest options where we're here right now is between Bethel and East Bethel. Uh, so location's more of it, yeah. yeah. And we've got a contract with them. I just, if we, if we wanted to explore something else, we could. I would just have to kind of get, you know, I'd have to get a hold of them, negotiate what that would look like. Didn't know if that was. That'd be good to look into. Yeah, the price we had, you know, originally went with, with the uh, these folks down here. The price was actually slightly different than what they were actually going for in Randolph. Okay. And that's about the time I took over. But and we just dropped cats off this, too. Right. Um, so we're just, it's just dogs down here anyway. Where are you going to do? I, I just wonder if maybe maybe we could delay this until yeah. our next meeting and, and maybe just do a little bit of information. Hey, good good PR if anybody ever asked and did look. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And maybe the biggest, biggest issue would be uh, uh, access. There's a lot of issues. Maybe they'd offer us a set fee for per resident. Like yeah, well, I can call. I'll well, call I think all, all three choices would have to offer, you know, 24 7 access, um, you know, in the means of that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the terms would have to be the same. Yeah, you, don't don't get 20, you don't get 24 7 down. I don't think any. We have a lot of that. I have access to them. Okay. You do 24 7 down there? Yeah. 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 yeah the well, is that something that, yeah, key, that you would want to take care of, or is that something that. Oh, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. I just wonder, we do have two. I, I could see if we had our own pound in here in Bethel, you know, but being that all of them are out of town. A lot of it, too, is, is people are dropping them off. Yeah. You going to be around tomorrow? Uh, in the afternoon. Okay. Why don't you see me and I'll get with you on what the kind of conditions are for this one so we can. I can do that. Surface. And the next time we get a dog, I was just thinking, just putting the canine on the side of yours, and you'll be all set to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think they have to train that way? You got to lay that in your place, right? That's the body of the Canine, sea lion, we'll just put it all around. Right. I am going to drug store later this month, so maybe that'll help. You've got a lot of room down somewhere. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, really. Well, it's one of those things that we haven't really had much of a discussion yeah. in the past, and we have seen this past calendar year some bills that were yeah. expensive in nature, and I just wonder if there's an opportunity there to uh, 
better service ourselves at this point. Yeah. So, so we'll just um, we'll I'll do a little that and we'll come back. Yeah, the next meeting. Yeah. So we'll table that one. Table it. Fifth. Uh, okay, select board member to review the warrants currently. Mr. Paul's doing that. Is that something you want to continue to do, Paul? Or yeah, work. Do a good job. Is there anybody that would like the opportunity to do that? It's exciting. <laughs> it's, yeah. I've seen that once in the last 13 years. <laughs> so I would just entertain a motion to accept uh, Paul to continue as the board member in charge of the warrants. So moved. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Paul. Now, now we dig into the so town appointments. I just want to mention that all of the people that are on this list of town officials have yeah. been contacted. Okay, they're okay with what they were with this day. Yes. The only one I don't have is Bob Young on the solid voice board. Okay. But he's not. I'm he's, he's still involved, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Bob Young? Yeah. Okay. And he's okay staying on that, I'm sure. He's probably still in there for a year or two. Okay. Do we do it every year? All every year. Everybody's every year? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll add that to your list. Okay. Okay. So I'll just go by what's on the uh, agenda here. So the first appointee would be the first constable. Currently, Mark is in the role of first constable. So, oh, I'm sorry, by the agenda. By yeah, the agenda. Just, by the way. Yeah. No, I just yeah. want to stick with the agenda because that's right. yeah. Let me get to the other um, back up here. So, I would entertain a motion to reappoint uh, Mark to the first constable role. So, we'll move for one, one year. One year. Yeah. It's all one, one year point. Yeah. 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 And you could change that. Down. Yeah, I was going to put my two cents in. That can be changed to a two year appointment if the board feels it would have to go through a, a public, you know. It would have, have to be voted. It'd it'd have to be voted. Voted. Yeah, but it, it is an option down the road if you ever. Out of the two towns, that is what I. So we might want to look at that next year then. On, on we talked about it last year, but it didn't get a whole lot of warm fuzzies from you, so. Yeah. The only yeah. thing is that you know this is an appointment that you pay on employees, but so that's where that. Yeah, but you can, so if it's something you'd like to, to, think, to, think, to like think about, it, we can definitely look into it at a later date. No more jobs. We have to write for through account of the We will. Right, exactly. So there's time. Okay, so motion is made by Mo, seconded by. I don't think anybody did actually. Second, no second. Mm -hmm. Paul. No. No. Any on favor? Okay, Mo, I won't wash your scrolls down. Thank you. <laughs> you uh, the entertain a motion to uh, uh, appoint all uh, uh, town officials as they are this year or next year in one fell swoop. I think that would work better than the. We got a couple waste to talk board. about. Well, yeah, we have one to talk about the solid waste board. But that would be an add, the add on. But that, uh, that won't really be the ones already there. I'll do it all one at a time, block it. Just said that everybody who wanted to do it was willing to do it again, so let's just get it done. Well, just to get the names into the record, um, I guess we could just talk about we could make one one motion at the end. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, Poundkeeper currently also um, is with Mark. The uh, I'm going to skip. I'm not going to include these Bethel Solid Waste Board in this, just because we do have a discussion on that. Uh, fence viewers, uh, Derek Wright, John Washburn, Will Brigham, Tree Warden, John Hartland, Weir, Cole, and Wood is John Washburn. Uh, we don't have it, uh, we do not have it on the warning tonight to appoint Town Force Firewood. Is that yeah. an appointee? Is that an appointee? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if nobody, uh, I, I think it's a good thing. Does it know who would come? One of them? I don't know. Uh, I'm going off the record we had last year. Oh. We, had a, we had a fair amount of people.
drop off last year yeah. uh, that mm -hmm. were inactive. So maybe we don't require. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we did the same exercise last year. We contacted the study to see who was interested. Most of the nutty. So I would entertain a motion to uh, to approve the existing uh, fence viewer, tree warden, wear coal and wood, townkeeper, and the town forest fire warden. Um, as is. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we. <clears throat> and then we have the Bethel Worldton Solid Waste Board. Um, our current members, uh, Mo and Bob. Um, so first, what I'd like to do is uh, get uh, get a motion to uh, accept Mo and Bob for another year on the South Coast. So moved. Second. Whichever is available. And then I would No, 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 wait. So <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That's all right. They're not on the list, so. Um, I see Mo here. So who else do we have? There's Bob. Bob Young. Bob Young. Bob Young. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Got it. Yep. There will be another. Might be another person in the Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And then we did have. Um, um, so um, Judith has expressed. A willingness to fill our open position on the solid waste board. Um, Craig has looked into this, um, or being that Paul and Judith are married, uh, that uh, going going through statute, there, there wouldn't be any conflict of interest, um, as as there currently would be no direct financial or personal gain um, through the process. Um, however, um, just wanted to get the board's opinion on. On Judith uh, yeah. being considered for solid waste board, yeah. You need to recuse yourself. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to bring that. Oh, okay. No, okay. I was just going to say that we would recuse Mo on that decision. But do we? Is there any sort of nepotism policy? Yeah, I went for nepotism policy, and if it doesn't cover it, no, it's fine. Not in this position, it doesn't. because there's no financial. There's nothing that's. Yeah, the nepotism usually refers more to. Right, but it's, it, it's for a direct personal gain of some kind. Is what I, that's how I read the statute. Plus, we have it in our personnel policy, mm -hmm. which you guys are not really covering. But right. uh, I, everything I've read is, is fine. Okay. It actually even says, if you read your uh, your manuals, it talks about it a little bit, your board manuals, that it's really tough to avoid having family on the boards in a small oh, town anyway. You go to a different town right. and there'll be cousins yeah. and uncles. But, on the but same if there's respect. no direct or indirect financial or personal gain to be had, which there is not at all in this case, it's, okay. it's fine. Can I make a comment? She'd be willing to step down if, if somebody else comes forward. That was going to be my comment. Is, right. is, is she just planning on filling in in the time? Basically. So, so we would continue to look for somebody to fill that spot actively? Yeah, we so we steps forward, forward, right? Right? yeah and we advertised for two weeks in the yeah. paper and didn't get anybody. Okay. Do you, need, do you want me to continue to advertise? Um, I mean, I don't think that we want to maybe advertise that maybe by a word of mouth of somebody. Yeah, we can throw on the website, website too. We can throw on the website. Yeah. 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 I've been looking around. I can't get any way to commit to. Well, it'd be nice to you know, like spread it out to a few people that were interested in certain different positions here at town meeting day, but it'd be nice to get on a committee or, you know, even one like this that meets once a month. You know, it's not a, a huge commitment. Oh, so. yeah. Get you into the flow of things, but uh, so if, if if we are in favor of that, I just need a motion to accept Judith Brigham to the uh, solid waste board. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> and. Yeah. <clears throat> the next step up, uh, kind of the same as uh, the reappointments here, is the East Central Vermont 
telecommunications representatives. The current uh, representatives that are in place are Matthew Washburn and Ian Stewart. They, have they been contacted? They have. Yeah, they're fine. So again, it would be a, um, a motion to uh, accept uh, Matthew Washburn and Ian Stewart to another uh, year as their representation. And then this. Does this one need to be signed? It does, by you. Just me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, then I'll, and, then, and then I'll sign it. So move. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 But it has not shown up yet. Just another question. I don't know if you guys do or not. Two rivers representatives and LABC 12. You guys appoint people or just leave them in there as they are? We do. So this will be, we have multiple appointment times. Okay. That'll be later on. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably take care of most of the other ones at the next meeting. Yeah, or, or even try to spread them out. Yeah, we've got. No, I'm not sure. I don't yeah. mind positions in my town. So. <laughs> Some of them are still waiting to hear back if the right. right. representation wants to go into the year. Um, but these ones tonight are yeah. cut dry ones. Yeah, typically it's, it's, there's a, it's a few months out, kind of hit and miss there as, as, the, as they come up. Okay. And we have the mud season rules. Everybody get a. Um, no. Get that here. It was put right together with the. Um, Yep. We're on the back side of the communications. This is exactly from last year. Yep. Just updated date. So I was putting me as long as uh, Greg and Alan have the right to, uh, in case a lot of truck wants to go on a frozen road or right. whatever. Yep, that's what it's always been. So. Yeah. so I entertain a motion to accept the 2019 mud season rules. Second. We'll have to sign this one. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> and then the next one, if someone could explain to me. I am. I, yeah, hopefully somebody can explain to me. We I I to know. I'm actually power. curious. I'd like to know what this is. Because I, I, I know I signed it last year, and but I'm interested to know what because it's a trust, but what is it used for? It doesn't look like there's ever been any withdrawals out of the trust. No, it's just collecting interest. I researched this with the clerk, and what we found was it has something, the trust was set up for the school. And at some point it was transferred from the school to the town. We can't find anything on really what it's for. Was Carol, Carol Ketchum might have some information. He might, yeah. The, in the, Especially public funds for many, many moons. Sure, I just yeah, want to keep my yeah, but it's, it originally it was it was for school. It was the purpose was for school, the school. Um, you couldn't find out where all the, the debits that went to the, I mean up until yeah. 2010, there was debits to the town court. Right. right. Treasure, town treasure. Town treasure. Right. I didn't do that part of it. We just looked through. Sorry, they were like so somewhere. Like All we looked through was the file of, of the trust, how the trust was set up, and what it. I didn't see the, the, the transaction. We didn't look at it. No, no, there was debits all the way up through, yeah, 2009, 10 area. Yeah. And they were always in the two, three hundred dollar area right. once a year. So I don't know what it. Well, was it, the, wasn't that a third time the money went up there? I don't. If, know. I don't I don't think that's the lady. You don't own the Campbell. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's that it. Yeah, that's yeah. That, uh, the monuments of on the Campbell Road. Okay, well, then that's what this is. Farm. That's why I, I don't know how it started with the school. Did they work for the school at some point? I don't know. Um, okay, well, it was at the school, so maybe it was set up on, I don't know, and then it was transferred to the town. So if that makes sense, that must be what this is for then. Just for the breed. Is that, but I know that I, when I talked to Carol about this last year, 
now that this is making sense, he said that really the funds are never usable because you, it has to draw a certain amount of interest before those funds are, can be used. And it never has or hasn't in a long time. That, I think, is a discussion I had with Carol last time. I believe this was set up when I was on the select board before. Yeah. Because his parent, uh, Faye Calgary's parents died. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was, they put a monument up there. Right. And I, I believe that at that time it was set up to yeah, you're probably right. perpetual care or whatever. Yeah. But the big issue has been, because we, I guess in the past there wasn't a whole lot of maintenance done to it because there was no money. The money wasn't coming to the town because it wasn't drawing enough interest on it. But we've well, decided to go ahead and do it. It takes, you know, 20 minutes to do. Uh, so that makes complete sense. I bet that is what this is. I wonder if maybe we could, if Carol and I maybe could come in and give us a history lesson on the... Sure. If that is what this is, because he and I talked about it. Because it, it looks like, you know, it was... 1988 was when the the official first ten thousand was put in there, and it looked like just about every year from '89 until '09 for 20 years, every year money was taken out of it, and it was anywhere from thirty-nine dollars up to three hundred. Right. Seventy dollars. Right. So, yeah. What you told me was it has to draw so much interest before that interest is paid. The last, interest the interest last paid. paid to the town treasurer was in 1998. Right. And after that, it's all interest. So, it, it's been, you, what I'll say, inactive for a while. Yeah. So, I just wonder. Well, again, I don't think it's inactive. I'll have him come in, but the discussion we had at last year was that. It has, to, it has to get to some sort of threshold of interest before... 600 well, is what it's indicating. So 600 it's before he gets any of this transfer to the town. Pay the town no interest as the 600 was not earned. So I think if the well, 600 you is your minimum interest and anything you above that gets... Paid yeah, that makes down. sense. You know, this is Jack Cowdery's parents? Yes. I mean, we could always get a hold of Jack. We could always get a hold of Jack. We need to have a history yeah. lesson on what it is. Yeah, we call yeah, Jack and we call him Williams and Randolph. Okay. I know Carol knows the history. Yeah. He knows the complete history because I asked the question last year. But the uh, yeah. guy's point, you know, me and Travis in the background. Do you want me to ask if Carol will come in and talk about it? Yeah, or, or whoever is most knowledgeable. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be great to yeah, the maybe have just have an understanding of what, what it is and what it is. Sure. Do you want me to see Jack sometime? I'm, I'm sure he's in Florida right now. Mm -hmm. Do you want to yeah. table it before you sign it? Is there an opportunity if we can get the person here for the next yeah, board no, meeting, we'll just table yeah, it and sign yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just be Carol, interested in know what. Because I was looking at it, I'm trying to think of, you know. The, yeah. Now that you've said that, that makes, that, that makes sense. I mean, That's it's growing, what is it for? And Got it. Yeah, probably these withdrawals were paid to the Bethel Treasury for care. Exactly. And that's why they hadn't been doing it supposedly in a while because it wasn't, nothing was being transferred because it wasn't getting enough interest. Right. So they were like, well, forget it, we're not going to do it. Hmm. That, that, that's what it is. That's exactly well, what Well, of course, you know, in the last, you know, 10 years, the interest levels haven't been at a rate that you're really going to. Back in 88 to 10%. Okay, I'll, I'll reach yeah, out. I think you can borrow, borrow on interest. I will, uh, I'll reach out to him and see if I can get Yeah, you're going to need to. Yes, on that. We'll on that. Uh, we have the select board meeting minutes from the 25th of February. You could approve the ones the week before, too. And we have the amended ones from the week before that should be in the book now, right? I'm going with the big help. So I would entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes of February 25th. And we've got a couple of comments. Um, on the first page here, this um, third bullet item down says reiterate that someone from the board needs to emphasize that the human services line items are included in the bottom line. And I think we were talking about emphasizing that all of those individual items that we were going to vote on, the cruiser, the human services, the conservation commission, all those were already in the bottom line of the line, oh, the as opposed to just the human services. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Additional okay. items. Thank you. Okay, what else you got? Page three. Next 
Can I stay on that page? Huh? Can I stay on that page? Yeah, sure. Uh, about three bolt, four bullets down, Seth Butler. I think it's Seth Stoddard. Seth Stoddard? Isn't that his name? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do you spell it? S-T-O-D-D-A-R-D? Yeah. What else? Okay. Okay, page three. One, two, three, third bullet. Uh, Jarvis noted there's some feeling for the amount of money the town is spending working on the older buildings. So we were talking about the specifically the municipal town office and the highway um, building, public works building. So we want to put those. Do you want to be specific to those too? Specify those, yeah. We got a lot of other buildings. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we can just specify so those. the garage. Garage and the town office. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Next page. Uh, transfer station board is short two positions. Uh, I think it, we should say the transfer station board needs to fill two positions. Okay. One from Bethel, one from Ronald. Yeah, picky, picky, huh? That's a little picky, yeah. That's a little picky. He gave her a price for a few months, so he's got to come back up. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Is that it? Fire me. Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. That's fine. Anybody else? Motion to accept the meeting minutes as amended. So move. All in favor? Aye. Right. Very good. Do you need a motion on there now? We approve them as amended so we can sign them. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so my report is, is in your package, just a couple of bullet points. Uh, the first item on there is the work order software. So um, the same software, it's called Spider, Spiderware? Spider Dad. Spider Dad. So this is the same software that Mark has been using to do his reports. Um, I actually got with the owner and the guy who's been putting it together and he, he's actually catered to sort of start looking for work orders. Um, and I get in on the ground floor because we're the first one, so we got it for $1,000 a year normally and we're going to get it for $200 a year potentially. So what it does is if we get a call from, well, first of all, the software allows us to populate all these drop down menus, which are, you know, our employees, our equipment. Um, buildings, things like that. So we have all of our assets put into this software. And when we get a call for service from somebody, like there's a pothole on Sand Hill, because there's never any potholes on Sand Hill. Mm -hmm. So um, that gets brought in and Kelly creates a work order that then gets shot out via, uh, it's a web page actually, but it gets shot out via a web page to whoever it gets assigned to. So it'd be out. And then Alan can then say, okay, AJ, go fix the puzzle, whatever. AJ has the ability on his phone, and this is all done through their cell phones or a tablet or something, because it's a web page. He can go in and say, okay, I'm leaving at 1015. He does the work. He gets back. He says, okay, I got back at 11 o'clock. I use this truck, and I use this material. What that does, and this, the intent of this is not to track the guys and what they're doing. That's not what this is. What that does is all those drop down menus and that list of assets that we've populated that with has a value assessed to it. So what it does is it allows me at the end of the day or at the end of the year to look during our capital planning process to look at different roads and look at different structures we have and see what that thing has cost us during the year. A nice another feature it has is it actually will flag different colors but it flags each pulp. So I can look at the map. After a year, I can go to the map and see little red dots where it calls me. So if I see that we're talking about redoing Camp Brook next year, and I look up the map and there's been 30 calls on Sand Hill, that, that's, that's additional data that I can use to bring to the board and say, well, maybe we need to look at changing our, our thought here because this road is costing us a lot more money and, and a lot more calls. So, um, so it does that for us also. 
It also helps us with FEMA. So if we have a FEMA issue, so we have another flow. Hopefully, and this is early, it's very early in the process, and the nice thing about being a guinea pig is we get to change the call. He calls up and says, what do you like, what do you not like? If we say, we tell him, he'll, he'll fix it for us. And he's done that well with my caterer, because I was the first one on our system. Yeah, but all of our costs and everything are assessed by FEMA rates. So, say we have another flood, if we're tracking our manpower and our equipment correctly with the software, at the end of it, I've got the value, I'm done. I've got the cost right there. And it's, uh, it's all pre-populated, basically. Uh, nobody can see this information other than myself and a couple others, like what people are making and stuff like that. The guys can't see any of this stuff. They just put numbers in, or put their, their time in, and it populates it. It doesn't show them any numbers. That, that's just for me only. Uh, so for $200, and being able to be the guinea pigs for this thing, and allowing, uh, allowing us to cater it kind of the way we want it, I think it was a no-brainer. It's gonna pay us back 100%. We start talking capital planning, you know, saying a road's bad is one thing, but if you've got something showing that your call volume is on one particular area, there you go, you know, that, that's a no-brainer. So, pretty excited about it, you can tell. We're gonna try to roll it out. We had training last week. Pretty simple, uh, it's all web-based, so we're gonna try to roll it out with the guys next week and, and kind of see how things start to, to shake out. It works for the winter roads as well? It'll work for everything. That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah, right now it's just gonna be the highway and Morgan, who's kind of a little of everything. Uh, if it works, eventually it'll be water. It'll be nice about a water break. There we go, we populate everything, and at the end of it, we start looking at water repairs or pieces of capital, you know, new water lines. We can look at the map and say, where's it costing us all the money? So, so pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe at the end of the, um, the testing period or before we have to re-up the membership or fee or whatever, I mean, just bring us back some information. Yeah. To tell us how it's going. Or yeah. Well, I can bring that. Maybe, maybe you show us a report or something yeah. so we can kind of see how, sure. how it's going. Yeah, I might even do like a little presentation. Yeah. It's pretty slow once we get it going. We can generate reports kind of like Mark does too and show you total volume of what we're doing, cost and all that. I like to be able to assess the cost and <coughs> pinpoint because you know, the whole reason to do it, to choose a capital, uh, an improvement over here over this other one is if it's costing more money. It's, it's simple, so. Well, you we also don't have to go back and physically backtrack, you know, something that happened a year ago. You've got True. all the data right yeah. there. So. Yeah, and if we have insurance claims. Yeah. You know, if we have the trees go down or whatever, like we had before, as long as we're tracking it right, all the data is right there. It's, it's all it's on easy. the server, too. So it's it's all on the server. It's all backed up. It's, it's back up by the cloud or whatever. All this is a web page for us. So. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, everything else is pretty kind of the stuff that we normally are doing. Um, I am rewriting the water ordinance. Um, I'll get that to you soon. It's really just a, a clarification of the water ordinance. It's not a full blown rewrite. Um, but I'll get that to you with some, it's some clarification and I've added some language uh, about who pays for capital improvements and stuff like that. It, it kind of brings it in line with the sewer. The sewer ordinance, it's got some of that language in it. So it makes it consistent with the sewer ordinance. So that'll be to you pretty soon for review. Um, the one-time truck, I talked before the meeting a little bit. It, it, it's killing us. This truck's killing us. Uh, it's down again. It's got turbo problems or something right now, I don't know. Um, so I'm shopping it around a little bit. I, I've been in contact with a couple of Ford dealers to see what sort of trading value they'll give me. Uh, what I'm contemplating is uh, seeing if I can find a used smaller type dump truck that will plow and have a blade that allows to plow like Camp Brook. Um, this truck, this one time that we had, it, it, it's evident that it's the wrong equipment. It, it's being used for something it shouldn't be used for. So there are a lot of used truck places out there. The state has a, an auction in May. There's a lot of different places. So what I'm trying to find out is if I can possibly get my hands on uh, a couple used pickups, like a half ton pickup, that the guys use during the summer, and maybe I'll fill a cloud, I don't know, but they use it during the summer when they're doing all their normal stuff. They're fixing stop signs, they're, they're doing whatever. They don't need to load up a one-ton pickup or a dump truck and take it out of the site. They can take a pickup, a regular truck, and go. So a couple little used pickups and a used dump truck with a plow on it. It's already off it. If this works out right, my thought is that I can get, I'm going to go back. Last year I did this exercise at Ted Green Ford, and she told me the truck trading value is $55,000. It's amazing to me, but, so hopefully it'll come back and let's say it's 45,000. At least that kind of tells me where I'm at, and might be able to get something. 
I may have to get the little trucks, the two little pickups from Denver, <coughs> but they've got used equipment, they've got used pickups. Uh, and then hopefully there's enough cash left over that I can shop around, look at auctions and things like that to get an actual dump truck. That would do the job up that hill. Uh, we've got the smaller truck now in town that can cover the little side roads and all that. that was, that's all covered now, so we won't really need that one ton to do that. So anyway, uh, if there's any thoughts on that, I would love to hear them, but that's just kind of my initial idea of how to dump that thing, pick up, and get some other equipment that we can use. At some point, we're going to be putting so much into that that we're never going to get a million value right. that, that pays us back. Right. And let's say that we get a, get a pickup and it breaks down a little bit. Well, okay, you know, that happens. We're probably not any less than what we'd be spending on the one ton. But I, I watched last year, not only does that one ton run all winter and get beaten up, but it runs all summer long. Everywhere it's happening. If they have to go check a road, they're taking the freaking one ton to, to check roads. Why not have a little work truck or something that they can jump in and, and away you go? So that is my initial thought. I love any feedback that you got, good or bad, whichever. Um, well, is, is that going to put more pressure on Morgan's truck to do? He'll be plowing all his all the side roads in town and not necessarily. Drive, he, he's drive. He's doing a lot of those. Right. Things, if we yeah. we are also going to look at redoing all the plow routes anyway to try to make it a little more efficient. Um, the, the idea with this truck would be something that's small enough that it, it's not as small as a one ton, but something that can still navigate around these paved roads, like a, a low profile kind of a thing. Um, so no, we're not going to put all that on for you. He's already busy enough during the storm, trying to do the sidewalks and everything else. Um, but... Well, he's going to take care of the, these little streets here. Oh, no, definitely. Because that's what we got. That's what it's for, yeah. Um, but Alan does, you know, like... He does North Road and he does Camp Brook and all that. Um, that idea the tent there would be that this truck would still do that. And if we switch over to part of the reason the one ton, a big reason why the one ton does Camp Brook is because it does sand. It does salt. It won't do sand. If the aggregate's too big or some issue, it'll be salt, but it won't do sand. Uh, so that's why it kind of has to do Camp Brook and some of these other roads. And more structure not big enough. So, Anyway, that's, that's kind of where I've gone with this a little bit. Um, again, I've got the word out to these dealers just to see what sort of trade of value they're going to give me. I don't know. But I think that thing, since I started here, that thing has been broken. Every, we get a half a storm out of it every single time. You know, and some of it's warranty, but a lot of it's not. And even the warranty stuff is costing us out the nose for downtime, towing, and everything else. So. Well, that's the big thing downtime because you know you've got to take that into account with the cost of what that truck is actually costing. It's down, and you've got a man there. Right, that and our backup truck is Morgan, so he's wearing that truck out of Cape Brook trying to cover for the down one time. So something needs to happen, and the money is not in the budget to buy any one time. It's just not there. So I'm trying to make something happen. If if and only if that trade-in value is forty-five thousand dollars or whatever. So. I think first it all depends on what the traded value of the vehicle is. Sure. I mean, maybe, you know, figure out if that's the true value of it and then... That's what I'm doing. Like I said, that, that's the beginning. Come back to us and yeah. let us know how we're making out with yeah. that. Well, does the idea sound rational? Why, why are we not plowing uh, Rochester Mountain with a big truck? That's a good... And then you had the same question. Um, part of it has to do with... I think this, the way I was told from the guys, is part of it's, it's the salt. So he's plowing it because he can salt it. The other trucks don't carry salt, they carry sand. I understand that. But during a storm, you're right, and that's why we're going to look at this, the routes in the summer to redo it all. Because the idea, I think, Mo and I have this discussion is that they do their portion, you know, they go apart with it and they cut in, but it might be, it probably makes a lot more sense to have them go all the way up and then come back. Yeah. They can push a lot more snow without breaking yeah. down. And then all they got to do is say, hey, I, the road's plowed, you pump some of it now. Or, or yeah. it's right. the small section right. or whatever. Right. Yeah. right. Well, right. you're going to redo all that anyway, right? right. Well, so, I don't know how much will be redone, but we're definitely going to look and see if there's a better way to, to make this a little more efficient for everybody. Because, you know, I'm sure they haven't walked in quite a lot. The rush you need that one's uphill. And you got to eat some at all. Rush, you need to go truck on your side. Yeah. We do. You know, that's something we'll look at. You know, I don't know, maybe at the end of the day that I'm not going to promise this, but it may be that we don't need an extra truck. I don't know. I, I think we do for some of these other roads, and I don't want to overwork the, the little 350. But until we get into it, he's into it, I don't know if I can 
didn't want to say that. But right now, just a contingency plan is to try to get some equipment, even though it's used equipment. But the guys are very, they can fix this stuff. And as much as the one time breaking down, even if we get a new truck and it costs us 300, 400 bucks to fix something, we're spending out on a weekly basis. Like I say, Therese said, we really don't have any money to spend for probably the next two or three years. And uh, capital? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the capital plan doesn't show a purchase for two, three, three years, actually, when you purchase a number. The first 13 one, I think. Oh, well, majority the of them are fairly new. That's the thing. Luckily. Well, yes and no, because one of them. Yeah. Well, then, you see, that's the only one that really has the most problems. The rest of the, the big dump trucks seem to be doing okay. But, uh, the one time is the killer. We well, may yeah. just want to look at your plow roots and see what. Sure. Well, I talked to Jorge and he said that. He said historically they, they replace the one time every five years. And we do a seven year or eight year rotation on our dump trucks. But he said they always, every five years, replace it. So it, it's obvious it was the wrong equipment if it had to be replaced every five years. And it's at its five years now. That's why it's starting to. Well, I mean, it's a combination of you had a. It, it's past its heydays, but you also have a very long winter. We've had a lot of storms, so the yeah. piece of machinery is working that much harder this year. Yeah. And it's probably not really the ideal right. well, and it's used all summer piece of equipment for the road, too. It's running all over all summer long. I only do everything all summer long, too. So it's, I, I, just, I, I just think I, you know, it just makes more sense to see if we can get more bang for our buck and put this thing, get this thing away from us. Especially if they're going to offer me $55,000 for it. That's crazy, but anyway, uh, just a heads up on that. And when I get more information, just check that website out to give you an idea on yeah. prices. Yeah, yeah, I will. I've been on a couple others. There's one. It's the state does auctions, but they have the auction house that they use as a website, and they have all these different auctions that you can get on and check out what they've paid, what people have paid in the past, and so. Most of the state equipment that's sold at auction is already reached its usable life. For yeah, the, what it was being used for. So. Right. And I'm sure that anything on the website is the same. You're right. And it, we're taking a chance. You're right. We're, I mean, we're buying used equipment. So there's always a chance that we're, we're taking. But again, if this truck is a low profile kind of, kind of thing, it'll sit in the garage all, all summer long. It won't be used. And we'll use the little pickups to do the jobs. And then in the winter, we have a truck that, that we can use. So anyway, I'll, I'll bring that back when I get some other stuff. Other than that, that's really all I've got. Everything else is kind of just status quo. We do have, again, for everybody out there in the newspaper, <coughs> uh, we do have the, uh, the tax sale will be March 19th at the town, at the town office. Um, you were on the appraisal for Bilodeau? Not yet. Nope. That's in the hands of the River Conservancy at this point. So that's, that's my report. Do you have any questions? The planning study grant, is that for the town. Is, that, is that Jose's plan? No. Or the town plan? For the town plan we, we haven't seen any minutes or anything from the planning commission in a long, long time. Oh, yeah? Is it okay. possible to get sure. some kind of an update from them? Oh, yeah. yeah. The planning commission? I haven't yeah. seen anything in a while. I haven't seen anything in a while. Aren't they now just like three members? Yeah. 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 It would be good to maybe just get an update. Sure. Maybe I would just not in the but that is, so yeah, that's a planning grant to read, to do a rewrite of the right. right. And that would be, that was, that was Jose's no, that's plan. being led by two rivers, actually. And the water master plan? Water master plan is really close, 95%. Um, we've got the comments, we return the comments, and we're just waiting for the final, okay. One of the things, there's a couple items in there that they are not, we're kind of fighting over a little bit. Um, one is how often he wants to dive the tanks, do the inspections of the tanks. He wants to do it like every two years, which is twice as much as we would normally do it. It's not cheap. So we're, we're trying to negotiate, if you will, with the state to, to see if they'll lighten up on some of the requirements. Um, so I think that's kind of where the whole list is. And so is there anything that we can start to take a look at as a, you know, as a board? Or is it too early to? You can, I, didn't I, I think, I can give you the draft. I have a 90% draft of this document, but once it's done, is really the only time because things have changed since that 90%. Our base project changed, some of our other stuff changed. It's no, it's going to be coming around the mountain here. It's got to be. Yeah, and we'll consider what we might need to do. 
Well, I'm working on the next grant, so we're working on doing another, um, it's a planning loan. It's part of the same loan that we had before, but the nice thing is I actually got the initial tank inspection, which they want now, even though it's early, they want it done. I got that rolled into our planning grant, so we don't have to pay that out of pocket right away, which is $5,000, $8,000, whatever it is that we saved. We didn't save, but like, deferred, if you will. Um, so hopefully well, that application's been done, so we'll, we'll start that. The next step, honestly, is we will, uh, the report will determine a base project, if you will, which is the one that's the biggest one and the most need, and we will do engineering on it. We are required by the state to do engineering on it, and that'll all be done through that same level. Uh, and we'll dive the tank, and then we'll move from there. Once it comes back with the design, we'll try to fund it. It's, it's how the state wants us to do it. So. But as soon as the document's done, you will see it. Just the, the, what is the PACIF? Passive is our insurance carrier. Uh, so I had the, their, I had their representative come out months ago and do a, a kind of a s assessment of all of our different sites. So there's the sewer plan, all different places. And look at um, potential risks that we are for BOSHA. If BOSHA were to come out and do an inspection, that we get held on, and he put together a whole list of things. So we've been going through. It's as simple as things like changing the batteries and those, all the way to um, documentation and things like that. So we've been addressing all those as we can. It also has implications on our safety grant that we get every year. So if we have any that are outstanding, that are high priority, that are outstanding, we can't get the grant. So we've had to address all those.